let me make a step back from the nature of AGI and um, I'm going to talk about the current state of the world where AGI is going to appear at some point and I'm going to talk about the perspective of the global brain which uh, has been uh, announced at about 100 years ago by Gerbert Wells on one hand and uh, Vladimir Vernaski as a term of nosphere on the other end and um, uh, as soon as artificial intelligence is concerned, there is typical kind of discussion between people uh, knowledgeable in the domain, whether artificial intelligence is not possible at all. And few people answer no, many people answer yes, and few, actually very few people uh, are answering that it is already here, but, but, but we are unaware of it. because. Maybe it's hiding because it's maybe created by some hackers or some uh, great co big corporations that are hiding uh, it from us. But then there is another possible answer that it's already there, but it's not hiding in some particular box or some particular computing device or supercomputer device, but it's spread it across the whole bunch of reflections caused by the multiple interactions of humans and computing systems and people's, people using these computer systems and that emergent patterns are uh, representing the global brain as collective intelligence of entire humanity. And I would consider that global brain is a, and by the way, that um, since uh, 100 years ago, uh, about 20 years ago, the idea of global brain has been advanced by the Global Brain Group, uh, where Ben Gersel was uh, one of the uh, leaders of this group. And right now, I believe to some extent, uh, the notion of global brain is represented by a global planetary cognitive system, which should be important for any person company or uh, a country uh, if they want to uh, survive uh, and develop uh, in the modern world. And that's because uh, every person in a modern world is connected, well, almost any person is connected and interconnected with each other with high-speed internet channels and high-performance computers, which effectively creates computable social network or um, creates the phenomenon of what we call social cyber cybernetics, where amount of nodes and degree of connectivity um, uh, of these nodes is comparable to those of human brain. But there are much more complex sig signals are transmitted from one node to another or the social links within the communities. And there is much more processing is happening in every node, like a human brain is much more complex than single neuron cell. And so we have another layer of complexity and that uh, complex uh, computing, social computing system on one hand provides opportunities for every node or every participant of this system being either an actor or, or a motor or a whether either um, uh, <clears throat> A receptor cell or a, a action cell or actor cells. But besides the benefits for every participant of such a system, uh, e everyone is um, maybe a subject of manipulation or maybe exploited by those who are trying to exploit the whole, so whole system for their own benefits, sacrificing the benefits of the participants of the whole network. That has the quite sound evolutionary perspective, which was described by uh, <clears throat> Russian and actually Soviet, uh, originally um, cyberneticist Valentin Turchin in 1970. And he suggested concept of metasystem transition where every uh, complex system is created on the by basis of more simple systems like uh, mo molecules are created from atoms, uh, cells are created from mo molecules and then multicellular organisms are created from single cells, cells and now we have human society created by multicellular organisms such as humans. And each level of complexity creates new emergent laws of operation, more complex representation of uh, information and more complex reflection, uh, reflexivity uh, patterns. Uh, uh, making uh, more complex uh, responses from the uh, body of such complex system in respect to the uh, stimuli from the environment. 
Another perspective uh, of um, the changes over the very last few tens of years is exponential growth of computing power. According to Ray Kurzweil, we are at a stage where computing power in terms of speed of computing is going to exceed uh, capacity of uh, mammals and then it's going to exceed capacity of human brain and in a few tens of years the human performance uh, will exceed the capacity of the uh, brains of all humans on earth. Besides just computational performance, we have also growth of the capacity of the capacity of computing systems to store the information. So original computing systems such as uh, <clears throat> alive cells and uh, simple animals up to mammals, they were storing their memories in a genetic genetic memory. And you see on this chart what's what are, how how the amount of information stored in genetic memory was growing over the evolution course, and at some point it has changed with uh, at the time when evolution has invented the neural representation of the memory. So we have uh, stopped keeping memory in uh, DNA code, and we have started keeping memory in MEMS where the MEMS were stored in the brains and the near inter uh, connections of neurons and could be uploaded from one brain to another brain uh, using the uh, symbol or sign languages. And so the uh, amounts of information that, that can be stored and pasted from one generation to another generation has been grown up in few orders of magnitude. But what we see now is that we are exceeding what is capable, what is possible for single human to store the amounts of information. So right now, supercomputers can store this uh, nearly the same information as single human brain. And if we take huge computer systems or entire internet, there are much more information. There is much more information can be stored by the entire computing system. So the mm, storage capacity of a single human is ex being exceeded and so the uh, system can deal with more greater amounts of information so and so it make more uh, reliable and more comprehensive in the uh, inferences and predictions and decisions and it can operate with great m m greater amounts of information and being more uh, successive or competitive in respect to human uh, beings Another uh, important change uh, that is uh, happening over the development of the uh, biological and non-biological computers is uh, what can be thought as a working memory or size of a working memory or capacity to, to deal with complex objects and multi-chain inferences involved in multiple steps of inferences keeping the whole scope of mm, uh, inference in one focus. Like uh, if we consider simple animals, uh, most of inferences were uh, able to be done in respect to stimuli response, uh, simple sp stimuli re response interactions and reflections. But if we uh, go up to prim pri prim primates, then for chimpanzees and monkeys and some other animals, we figure out that there is possibility to make complex inferences and communicate in complex languages involving nouns, pronouns, adjectives. So like chimpanzees, they can talk, talk uh, language uh, <coughs> sentences with uh, multiple parts of speech and multiple uh, members in the sentence and then can make complex uh, inferences involving multiple actions like two to three actions. And then here are we humans, so we can uh, do long inferences, we can keep multiple things in attention focus, we can uh, communicate with complex sentences involving uh, complex structures of the information encompassed by these sentences. But if we deal, if we can't exceed uh, seven to nine uh, elements in uh, being stored in our attention focus. But when we come to computers, the amount of items that we can have an attention focus is just depends. It just depends on design. So, like we can system, uh, we can create a, a computer solving a system of uh, differential equations with uh, uh, in any number of variables and any number of equations that can be kept in the brain of a single human. So, we can multiple uh, aspects of where. Uh, computers and supercomputers can be at the humans. <clears throat> Let's take another perspective. For the whole history of human race, people were interacting with each other. 
but they were interacting in a such a limited way so that given the history of the coevolution of human brains and communication languages and uh, social structures, uh, people are not able to communicate with more than uh, seven to 10 people effectively and no one human can interact with more than few hundred people at all which is limited by so-called Denbar number, which is uh, which is varying from 150 to 200 something for <coughs> some smart, socially intelligent people. <clears throat> and so now people are trying to communicate uh, in more efficient ways using social networks, messengers, where they can connect in much larger uh, social groups than it was possible during the all whole history of the evolution. So like uh, now, any social network can upload the images or uh, accounts and profiles of multiple people into its own internal graph. And so it can uh, let everyone connect to everyone within this graph, but it also can do its own inferences and its own machine learning and uh, deep learning and any predictive analytics on these profiles, tracking the activity in these profiles during the, uh, during the uh, any time period. So right now we have few such computing systems like Google Graph and Google Social Network uh, by implicitly created on all uh, Google uh, accounts uh, running Android, uh, Gmail and YouTube and so forth. We have Facebook uh, universe with another uh, <clears throat> a few billion people. And then we have few smaller others like here we see that Google and Facebook are uh, keeping uh, two to three billion people on Earth. Then there is a China world with one billion people under WeChat and uh, Baidu. And then like Facebook, just 200 million people. So the world is actually all, uh, covered by few uh, partially interlacing global network, which are uh, performing what we can call uh, social computing. Uh, what is interesting and also is that besides uh, people, there are computing devices being uh, connected to these, these networks. So in some cases, these devices are just devices of the Internet of Things, like um, <clears throat> smart coffee machines or smart refrigerators or smart webcams. And we know that with the development of and uh, narrow AGI, narrow AI, and uh, later AGI, each of these devices may be getting smarter and smarter. And besides uh, devices, there are bots, there are artificial beings which are pretending to be humans and are engaged in computer interactions with humans. And at some times uh, we can discover like, uh, <clears throat> uh, the numbers are shown in this slide for the year 2018 that in uh, two years ago, there were much more uh, devices on the uh, global internet than humans. So the humans become uh, uh, in, uh, in to, <clears throat> to be minority in the world of uh, internet and in, in the infrastructure of multi-agent communications. So here's the architecture of what we can call modern global brain. So at the bottom, we have uh, our, uh, uh, human uh, brains and all these human brains are connected to the online environments and the online environments is collecting our posts, search queries, status and location changes, uh, go, uh, filtering our emails and chat messages and in return it re returns us search results, push notifications, it's for, it forwards emails and chats with some sort of filter and processing and <laughs> as we know analysis of them uh, for different reasons and the different styles, uh, styles like metadata processing or just data processing in different cases. And it is possible and sometimes it is happening that that online environment is performing the management of the people underneath uh, that uh, cloud of the computing uh, power. Uh, moreover, there is another uh, participants or can be appearing in this design. There are uh, people uh, or machines or people that can be actually inter inter intercepting the communications and introducing additional social manip manipulation and social engineering efforts like uh, fake news, reputation gaming, 
and so forth. So uh, besides uh, the soft management caused by the owners of the online environment, there may, may be malicious and the criminal um, parties also contributing to this. And uh, as the previous slides have been showing that uh, the computing power from the performance perspective, from the memory capacity perspective, from the complexity and ability to deal with multiple uh, uh, variables and equations at a time are increasingly ex uh, in uh, exceeding the capacities of the human brain and capacity of all human brains in the future. So what was possible just few years ago? For example, uh, using uh, Facebook API and uh, analytical tools like, like Wolfram Alpha, you were able to analyze social structure, social dynamics, social profile of any Facebook user and track the dynamics of each profile over years and months. What you can do right now, uh, you can do, uh, you can use Google Trends Analytics to study the uh, movement of uh, people's intentions and people actions and people interests using uh, responses of the Google search to the people's queries. And for example, here you see the reflections of the uh, <clears throat> Uh, Google, 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 Global Brain uh, uh, in respect to COVID-19 epidemic. Like uh, on the top slide, you see the graphics of interest uh, to different uh, search terms for the for China. And here you can see that first people are interested about cough and um, uh, fever. Then they start searching for face mask, and later on they. Uh, get interest in respect to COVID-19. If you go look down, you will see the same picture for the United States and you will figure out that uh, the fever and cough uh, comes first in people's minds, then they are interested about COVID-19 and after a while they start searching for face masks. So using this kind of analysis, you can draw some causal conclusions and analyze different patterns, social patterns and cultural patterns and maybe political governance or co maybe commercial patterns that are different, work differently in different societies and different communities. And using this information, you can uh, exploit this information for your business reasons or uh, political reasons. Moreover, you can uh, have much more reliable analysis uh, using uh, some devices that are connected to, to humans and have more reliable information compared to uh, what people search. You can get access to human body and uh, watch the temperature of people in the real time and you can track the uh, health of um, individuals uh, within the whole countries and communities with a pretty accuracy of days and hours and make your predictions for that. In fact, if you have access to historical data of any kind, you can do the monitoring and you can do predictive analytics of any dynamics, including social, di social dynamics, which is shown by multiple uh, sci <clears throat> scientific experiments, uh, the, which uh, make it possible, we show it is possible to predict behavior of people using the historical data collected online. And uh, we know that <clears throat> it, is, it is also being uh, used in marketing and advertisement. But since you can make prediction, predictions, you can also uh, manage the social dynamics. And you can manage social dynamics for different reasons, including marketing. So you can if implicitly force people to buy something that they don't actually need sometimes. Or you can use psychological operations in order to uh, make uh, help one society or one country to fight with another country on the information warfare, splitting the uh, communities in your alien country and uh, consolidating communities in your own country. And you can do that just injecting different ideas in different uh, people with account to social groups, uh, digesting these ideas. So these groups may be either taken together or taken apart. And what is uh, important uh, <clears throat> from, uh, that at the current day that if before uh, all these manipulations and all these operations have been happening to some extent, uh, but they were mostly limited by languages and cultures within the national bond boundaries, but nowadays 
uh, we have the whole earth covered by social networks with some exceptions the communications and interactions and manipulations and the exploitation of personal data and personal intellectual property is um, happening worldwide and given again given the power that is uh, being uh, used to do this sort of analysis prediction and manipulation we uh, can draw that uh, it is a it is a, a, absolutely important for any business or government to understand this and uh, <laughs> uh, that it is well understood by major governments and ma major global corporations because they are actively using all this and trying to uh, <clears throat> advance in this but it is also important to understand for entire humanity and research uh, research communities it, it is important to understand the emergent cognitive behavior patterns but patterns of such complex systems otherwise we won't be able to predict where are we going with this kind of uh, social uh, computing or global brain design and what uh, awaits us next in a few years like we were unexpected uh, COVID-19 epidemic but maybe just in two years ago two years ago we'll have global craziness epidemic so maybe this uh, cognitive behavior of uh, our global system will cause everyone going nuts in a, in a scenario uh, uh, worse than we are observing this uh, COVID-19 epidemic, for instance. And of course, for every single person, it means just new re reality to understand and adjust their life lifestyles to, yes, if they want uh, to have some control of your life. So where are we coming with this? And what does it have to the AGI? So let's assume the AGI emerges. And if it emerges, then the question is where, uh, <clears throat> what's the place of its emergence? Whether that emerges in a personal uh, computer or a smartphone, given some smart software uploaded in this smartphone, or maybe it emerges in some uh, power server of some company, or maybe it's emerged in a supercomputer of a global corporation which owns all the data that I've been talking about <clears throat> during the talk. There are two possible answers, and one answer is given by Stanislav Lem in the Oceans uh, in the Solaris novel, where he describes the single uh, brain, a planetary brain, as an uh, entire ocean floating in the universe uh, as a, or, and covering the entire planet. And another, uh, and so that single uh, brain, single uh, planetary intelligence, um, and no one interacts with it other than uh, outer space and the humans coming to it from the other solar systems. Uh, and another design of the uh, intelligence is uh, also described in the Stanislav Slam novel called The Invincible. And it designs, describes rather different design. It describes the swarm intelligence of a distributed uh, sw uh, swarm of elementary uh, beings uh, which cooperate with each, each other in a distributed way and building patterns, adapting the environment changes so that any uh, change in the environment cause another emergent pattern created by the collective intelligence of the swarm. So uh, if we want a global brain to be rather distributed than centralized, then what we can do here? So we assume that it is still better to have the distributed global brain. And that has because of, that's because of multiple reasons. And primary reason is uh, just to, be, to, be, to, to let it be more democratic and more available for everyone and to avoid situation when the whole single brain, global brain goes in the wrong direction. And that means the end of, <laughs> for, for humanity. And if you want it to be more, more distributed and more open and more democratic, then the first thing that we can do is a distributed open artificial intelligence but ecosystem like Singularity Net is doing. And then since the uh, distributed system is uh, may be subject of manipulations and reputation gaming and uh, it, is, it, it, it needs some way to assess the 
uh, reliability of any social um, agent, any uh, any node in the net network, so it can be trusted by other nodes. It should be there should be a way to let the all these nodes and the distributed network to reach consensus or local consensus in respect to the goals or issues uh, or that are uh, experienced by certain clusters uh, of the network or entire network. And here the uh, reputation system based on the principles of, of liquid democracy and particularly uh, in a liquid democracy in particular that can be used to manage the reputation and uh, governance within the distributed communities. And, and finally, since we have a distributed network of uh, agents and people and agents serving individual people. We are working on the project called AI Agents, where we create, where, where we, um, our goal is to create the personal artificial intelligence for every end, end user. So every end user can exp exploit the power of the big data present online and uh, any person can use uh, <coughs> any open data and uh, use its personal artificial intelligence to draw any conclusions and make any predictions that people want. So SingularityNet is a marketplace for products and services and it gives, uh, it is open source and auditable by humans. And uh, even if humans are not able to process all data to do audit or analysis of the dynamics of the system to take some sort of control, it can be still analyzed by artificial intelligence system if it's, since it's open source, so it's open source uh, and open data based. And then, um, there is a reputation system taking control of the reputation and the reliability of any agents of the network. So we can be sorting out the malicious agents. And the idea of the uh, reputation system here is uh, build the uh, reputation assessment and consensus development within the community based on the principles of what we call weighted link trunk. And it is an alternative to known a proof of work and proof of st stake consensuses that are used uh, in modern blockchain as well as in modern human societies. So using proof of work in the blockchain is uh, kind of using brute force or power of muscles and power of uh, weapon in the human history. And proof of stake in the blockchain is like uh, using proof of money or proof of uh, or, or uh, uh, having everything controlled by money in the modern society. But proof of reputation is what we are thinking is the future of the distributed communities where uh, the matter of your uh, of a, um, uh, reputation or uh, reliability or assessment or trust given to particular node in network in a network is a reputation earned by a node or an agent or a human or a device in terms of long term uh, audience base collected during the interaction each of the nodes within the system with each other. And the simple formula of the weighted liquid rank algorithm that we propose for that involves that reputation is computed based on the uh, rating V, which is given by any agent to any agent during particular reputation at any point of time. Then there is a weight w and the way w corresponds to the particular in nature of the interaction like if it's financial transaction the amount of transaction obviously more expensive transactions would be given more weight or if it's a review the number of words in a review like if i write a long review with someone then most likely that review is more meaningful than very short review which didn't involve too much time spent by the writer and finally and most importantly there is a third component of the uh, weighted liquid rank computation algorithm is the reputation of the rater itself so whenever someone rates someone the rating uh, is uh, accounting the reputation of the rater itself. So the reputation flows from one person to another person. So we can uh, avoid uh, reputation gaming created by armies of bots or fake users of fake accounts. Uh, how we do it? <clears throat> For example, in the AI agent system, we uh, have a, a software which can analyze any information that can be found online, starting with likes and votes, or a post or comments or payments in, in blockchains or any financial systems. And all these interactions can be 
assigned the weights, can be assigned the time. They are attached to particular accounts in the network, and you can infer multiple things starting from the interests from the people and similarities of them, and sort around the hierarchy of the and clusters of finding the clusters in the society. Then you configure out who are friends of who, who are fans and followers of who, who are authorities and opinion leaders and vendors of who. And importantly, most importantly, you can figure out the dynamics of the reputation and trust developed, uh, developed by every participant over the time. Like here, is a result of the experiment that we run on the Steemit blockchain. On the right, you see, you can see the graph, uh, which uh, takes the sum subgraph of the Steemit network ecosystem and renders a few different graphs where middle graph subgraph is rendering some uh, subcommunity, which is sending money each to other with green arrows. And the gra graph on the left involves another community, which is mostly sending com writing comments and, uh, and making likes in respect to each other. And on the left, you see charts of different metrics computed uh, for uh, participants like amount of uh, ratings of fans of some particular users. Uh, then in the middle, there are authorities of some particular users. And in the bottom on the left, there is a chart which renders reputation of every member in the community given the, uh, based on the weighted liquid rank algorithm. And here is exa another example that we ran for the uh, uh, Amazon. So what we did, uh, we um, uh, created simulation model of the Amazon marketplace and, uh, <clears throat> and the model par par parameters of, of the model were, uh, were, were um, collected and designed by Nidar and the simulation of the marketplace has been created by Deborah Don who was presenting. Uh, on this conference also. And then we use it uh, weighted liquid rank algorithm implementation applied to this simulation model of the Amazon marketplace. And we have, uh, we were able to figure out that we can separate all honest, most of honest participants with the reputation level above 75% and um, almost all except one on this picture scammer. Uh, so all scammers were happening, uh, were given assigned reputation level above 50%. So we were able to sort out who are the scammers and who are the honest participants. And that was uh, rather different uh, compared to the traditional reputation system, which don't involve the weighted liquid rank algorithm because using a conventional reputation system, the scammers were not uh, distinguishable from the honest participants. And the honest participants were losing money in our simulation model because they were paying money to scammers for their fake products. Uh, finally, in the AI agents open source product or project, what we do, we create social and media intelligence platform for businesses. We integrate heterogeneous social and online media sources, blockchains, payment systems, and messaging platforms, coupling them with artificial intelligence. Uh, so it makes it possible for users to find and track changes in the in the on, on all of the sources and let uh, <clears throat> and get it be, uh, extract the information from these uh, sources and track the changes of this information field, and uh, <clears throat> it can also. So do analysis of the reputation and analysis of everyone's social connections in the, in the directions and tracks people preferences and help to build and uh, make communities and make communities more safe and efficient. So thank you. And I am welcome to questions if there is some time for questions. Thank you, Anton. So there is a question from the community that just popped up, uh, whether your proposed system might make it too difficult for the system to pay attention to innovative ideas from new or unproven emergent sources. Well, uh, so uh, if you are talking about the reputation system and if there is a a uh, new source that is uh, not new at the time of its appearance, there is nothing else that we can do other than uh, give some initial level of trust and reputation and let the source to show its performance and let the source of the information to be actually uh, uh, tried by the participants of the community 
and then uh, during the course of interaction initial uh, from the very beginning of the source of uh, information with the community we start tracking the reactions of the participants of the community and we update the status and trustability and uh, so <laughs> reputation level of the source along the time uh, with its um, when the time goes that's a quick uh, answer there, there may be more long answer <laughs> but <laughs> Little time. Well, there, there were a bunch of interesting discussions um, on the community channel and, and a lot of that related to also in terms of the emergent global brain as a um, uh, as an AGI or whether it actually is an AGI versus a GI and so on and so on, um, but also involving speed of communication, but a more specific question um, related to reputation, right? Um, how robust is your system against spammers who can learn smarter ways to disguise their intentions? Okay, so that's pretty good question. So we have spent uh, the whole last year with Nidnidar and uh, Deborah Dont and especially uh, other people like Cassio Pinach and uh, Marco. And uh, we were trying to simulate different environments like the amazon was just the very last uh, case which we used to simulate and we were exploring different um, attack vectors and different ways to cheat the system and we were uh, and we were exploring different uh, reputation system configurations uh, that were applicable in different cases <laughs> i'll just give an example so for example if we consider uh, the uh, reputation system uh, where we have uh, where every interaction is actually recorded like if I go to the uh, grocery store my reputation interaction is recorded and if I go for credit or medical care my interaction re record uh, recorded so in this case everyone is connected to everyone in respect to anything and then we can have the complete graph of all interactions and then we can have liquid rank actually we're working potentially from the birth uh, of an agent within the system and then they that makes uh, <clears throat> design quite uh, stable and you can uh, it's quite difficult to fool the system it's actually almost impossible to fool the system in, in such case in real life that's not happening like if you have amazon like on this slide then uh, about 20% of participants are sellers and the other 80% are buyers and there is little overlap so you can't um, get a reputation of sellers based on their behavior as a buyers and vice versa so you need, and what we do here we account for the uh, amount of uh, the behavioral patterns of the agents who provide the reputation so we, we make uh, we, the, we, we complicate the formula, uh, which is uh, shown here, with more factors like the weight may involve the history of an agent within this network. Like, for example, if someone is just a novel system in the network, like uh, the, the agent just first time registered here, and when this agent uh, rates everyone, someone then we don't account for this reputation but when the time goes the loner agent stays on the uh, system then the greater uh, weight is assigned to its rating or if the agent is spending money within the ecosystem and this agent is not getting uh, negative reputations then based on the amount of spendings then we pay, may pay, pay more attention to attention to this agent because of, because of its uh, history as a payer or if agent is given reliable predictions, if agent is known to give uh, good predictions to the agents, to the sellers or uh, other agents that have proven to be good in the, in the past, in the future, in the in, in historically, and or when the time goes, then later on this agent is given better reputation than those who provide fake ratings for those who uh, appear to be bad in the end. So there are multiple complexities and uh, given the uh, dynamics of any network and attack vectors change, there may be possibility to uh, have some dynamic monitoring of the uh, state of the system and have automatic adjustments of the reputation system parameters when the typical uh, attack vector changes. 
uh, but uh, our research uh, shows that in most of cases using uh, weighted liquid rank reputation system is better than using uh, conventional, what we call conventional reputation system, which doesn't account for weighted <coughs> and uh, liquid reputation. And using the conventional reputation system is worse than not using any reputation at all. So if you have any simple reputation system, it will be gained. And it, it will be, it, for the customers, it will get worse than using no any reputation system. So we are trying to make it change it and make it better. So still using reputation system based on the weighted liquid rank, it is still better than not using any reputation system at all, so to speak. Mm -hmm.